nervous and I was super excited, but then I was overwhelmed at the same time. I think because it's COVID and we're all in different places. Um, so what my intention is, is just to kind of help feel that process of field day. I know when I start planning field day, I start in about February um, and not this late in the year. So I don't know if some people have already started thinking about their field day, if they haven't even thought about field day, if field day is starting to come up in your building more often like it is in ours and where you are. So um, I don't have all the answers. I know some of us are completely we're hybrid, some are full person, some are going back and forth. So I just hope that whatever I can present today will just kind of gear some ideas. Oops. Um, so my goals for this presentation is to one, again, provide ideas to run a fun and safe field day for all students and staff members, but then also kind of remind us that we've done this for a whole year and what you've already done is amazing. And if you can pull off a field day, kudos to you. And if you can't, again, it's been a tough year and we've made it this far, so just don't beat yourself up. Um, what you've done is great already for the kids and your community. Um, this is just one of those, those end of the year things that we look forward to. Um, so again, I'm Callan Fowler. My contact is up in the upper right hand corner. Um, my email address is fowler.c at dpccsd.org. Um, I'm also active on Twitter, so my Twitter handle is there as well as my Instagram. I did not add that on there, but I'm on Instagram. Um, again, this is my eighth year as a K-6 teacher. I taught K-8 for two years at a charter school and then moved on to a public school. Um, I am a mom of a sassy 22 months old, so I like to show her a picture whenever I can. And my husband is one of my biggest supporters, especially during this year. So that's my little family and about me. Um, so field day 2021. Um, again, I don't know where we all are in this grand scheme of PE and what that looks like for us. So I'm going to kind of give us an eye on both sides of that the best way that I can. We started our school year two weeks late on a hybrid schedule. Uh, meaning that I only saw half of my kids on Monday, Tuesday. We were off Wednesday. I saw them again Thursday, Friday, but it was on a five-week rotation. So I would see them every five weeks. Um, after the holiday break, so starting in January, we all came back together full-time. We still have those kids that are virtual, but at this moment, our virtual kids are still coming back into the building. Um, so our schedule on our roster is continuing to change and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that as well. Um, field day was not in my plans this year. From the beginning of the year, we just decided that we weren't going to do field day, we weren't going to do concerts, we weren't going to do field trips. Um, but once all of our kids came back to the building, we started realizing that our COVID cases were going down and the things that we were doing in the beginning of the year were obviously proving something was working and why can't we do what we were doing in previous years. Um, so again, I normally start working on field day in February, getting my volunteers ready, getting activities thought about, thinking about scenes, thinking about timelines. Um, and this year, it's now almost May and I'm just now getting it all together. So if you're like me, it's okay. <laughs> and if you are have already planned it and you're just here, you are way to, like, way to jump the gun and be active. Um, so in person and how this can be done, just a few things. I would definitely talk to your administration if you haven't done so already. Um, sometimes what we think that we can do, our admin, they're on two different sides of the spectrum. Some are really supportive and are like, hey, yeah, do what you want to do. And some are like, no, we've got to stick with the guidelines, stick what we've been doing. So I just suggest that you talk to your admin first, whatever that may look like for you and your situation. Um, keep it simple. I know when I do field day in a regular year, it's an all day event. It's the whole entire school at one time. We get ice cream trucks. We have lunch outside. It's literally from 10 o'clock until the end of the school day. Um, this year, I knew that was something that we were not going to be able to do and do it safely. Um, so I had to keep reminding myself to keep it simple. 
our kids know that we're doing this because we care about them and we want to keep things normal, but we also don't want to add more stress and more things onto our plate. So we might just have to take a few steps back and remember just to keep it simple. Um, recruiting and involving your grade level te teachers or your specials team. I, again, I don't know how a lot of you run your field days or if you've ever even ran a field day, um, but I rely heavily on parent volunteers. My biggest thing is that I want to advocate for PE and I'd love for my grade level teachers to help, but I actually love for my parents to get involved so they can see what we do inside the classroom and how it's executed during field day, but then they're also involved in the fun and the setup and the behind the scenes and they really enjoy it as well. So for this year, I would encourage you to include your grade level teachers um, and your specials teams if you really wanna make this field day uh, memorable for our kiddos. Uh, my last little bit of information and we'll move on is to look at what you've done in the past and modify it. I am a firm believer that phys ed teachers are probably the most innovative educators out there and I think we can turn nothing into something and it's like man I just did that by doing something so simple and it looks glorious um, because we're good at modifying and just adapting to our situation. Um, so field day 2021 for us I um, and these are just some ideas and I'll go back to kind of what we're doing this year because it actually changed. Um, I just made a list of things that I did when I first started teaching. I didn't start a field day until my third year teaching, so my first year at my current school. Um, and I just had it really simple. We did a lot of water relay, so I'm thinking water, COVID, washing hands, <laughs> kind of hand in hand. So like sponge and bucket relays, depending on what your district is doing right now, I think sponge and bucket would still be fun for our kids. Um, parachute. Old fashioned relays where you just don't need anything but a start and a finish, a person saying, I know where I could set go, and a group of fun and active kids. Um, jump rope and hula hoop contests, water balloon toss. I did buns of steel one year and that was a hoot. Um, I can explain that a little bit later. Obstacle courses are things that can be used with minimal touching if that is a concern of your district, um, but it also is really competitive and fun for our kids and our staff. Home run, home, home run derby, we're in the midst of baseball season. Um, that takes limited equipment, just a big open space, um, and to work on those skills that we've been doing in phys ed as well. Football tosses, um, yard dashes, frisbee disc. Again, if you can clean, that's something that you can spray down really quickly and then transition to the next group. Um, we have an Amity Strongest Kid and that's um, all the kids participate, but they do just silly tasks. Like they'll carry a milk jug from one side of the field to the other and do a set of squats. They'll spin, a, spin around in circles. You can create that however you want to. And again, you don't have to use any equipment or you can use minimal equipment. Um, potato, and I put not sack, kind of like an egg relay. We did that one year just because we had extra potatoes. Maybe make some french fries at the end. Um, this year, like I had mentioned, our field day is going to look a little bit different. And two weeks ago, I was planning a field day where my specials team was going to run the field day during our specials time. We were gonna have three grade levels out at a time. Um, grade levels were going to compete against each other, but then we realized there's only five of us and we can't possibly manhandle all these kids and we don't have enough bodies in the building to help us at this time. Um, so I worked with our grade level team and they are deciding to run the field day on their own this year. They're getting equipment and ideas from me. I'm the only phys ed teacher in, in our building. So they are getting a list of activities from me and each grade level looks a little bit different. So I've created a list for them of activities that we've done in class already, things that the teachers can go over super quick and our kids will pick up on. Cause again, I only see them every five weeks. So if I was starting field day practice, I would have to start this week in order to see them all by the end of the year. Um, there's a couple of options that other PE teachers were doing. So staying in class cohorts to complete field activities, meaning maybe Mrs. Jones' class is just competing against Mrs. Jones's class. 
at 10 30 in the morning and they have a whole hour to get a set of activities done again i think everyone's in a different place right now and we can kind of um talk about that and ideas that'll work best for your situation um my original idea was splitting field day into two shorter days so like i said i typically do field day all day long in one day and it's massive. And at first I was thinking, oh, I get split it into grade levels. First and third grade on Tuesday, fourth through sixth on Thursday, on Wednesday, and we'll be done. But again, we didn't have enough people. So that may work for your um, situation, but it wasn't, wasn't the best for us at that time. Um, grade level teams. So if your grade levels are split into teams, and I put Pfizer and Moderna on there, but maybe Mr. Pfizer's class, stays on one end and Miss Moderna's class stays on the other and they compete the entire day. That way those kids still get kind of that competitive nature. They get to see other friends from other, other classes and they're competing in a different kind of style, but they're also still staying safe um, and staying within their class cohort. Um, I was chatting with Tom and I had told him that I was wearing my national field day shirt from last year. I am not a paid sponsor of open phys ed, but I did participate in national field day last year and my kids absolutely loved it. Um, so if you are thinking of maybe doing a virtual field day, and that is something that I'm actually presenting to our students in building and virtual is in um, our open national field day this year. The kids in the building are getting an in-person field day, but then they also have the option of doing a virtual field day with their family. And then our virtual students are getting that virtual option as well. Um, so I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with Open. If you are not, I highly suggest that you visit their website. Um, it's openphyzed.com. And with Open, they provide a lot of PE resources created by phys ed teachers and then just people that have been in education that are standard-based, um, and they've really honed in this year on the SEL components of the lessons. They fit our standards, um, and it's made for K through 12. So to join National Field Day, um, you do need to register through OPEN's website, and I have other slides to show us how to do that. Um, registering will allow you to get up-to-date events that happen with the events for National Field Day. So they will give you the write-out on how to do it. They'll show you a video. You can be a part of the highlight video from for this year, as well as sending links on to your family. So National Field Day um, runs from May 7th to June 18th, which is really flexible for families and teachers. It gives you a couple of different options on how to implement National Field Day. Um, this opportunity allows for students to participate in field day and then also feel safe and comfortable in their own home. And it's also a great way to advocate for phys ed. So again, we did it last year. Um, I had students submit pictures and videos to me. We added hashtag national field day. So it was on social media and it was just a way for our kids to still feel connected in this not so connected time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play the field day highlight from last year, Tom. I hope I do this correctly. Um, and this is just real kids. It's not my students. We did something else this year. Um, so we'll be in the in the torch relay, so the beginning of the highlight video this year. So this is just a little highlight from last year. Again, I don't know if a lot of you did National Field Day last year or if you started it. But this is just some real kids and real families talking about this. Oops. I can get there. Okay. Before I work, can everyone see the new screen? Or Tom, can we see it? Yep, we can see it. Right. Okay. I'm going to enlarge this and we'll get it started. It's only about three minutes. Family time and lots of 
Exercise. All right. With um, COVID happening and school closing, I was afraid that we were not able to have school day. I was afraid that it wouldn't happen for my students. It wouldn't happen for my own kids that you see in the background. But thanks to Open, Field Day is still happening. So Ava, how was your first ever National Field Day? I absolutely loved it. What I liked about National Field Day is that it was fun and it involved learning. National Field Day 2020 is amazing! I'm having a blast! Field Day is everything that we work for for the whole year. And the most important is the bonding time we had together, mother and son. We were so sad that we didn't get to do Field Day with our friends. But thanks to National Field Day and my mom, we had so much fun. Thank you! It's so much fun when we do it as a family. Okay. Am I back on to my slide? No, you are yeah. you are just on you. Ah, well, hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the tiles. I mean, it was okay. Um, so you can either stop presenting and then just go back down and hit the uh, present now and click the tab again. Do the tab. It's only 2021 and I can't figure this out. <laughs> well, okay. We all have so many different uh, presentations, I know. Or, you know, Zoom and Google, so we see your show. Okay, thank you. All right. um, so again, that was just a highlight from, oh gosh, last year. Um, and again, those are real kids. They were not actually mine or kids that I knew, but they were just real kids that participated in field day. Um, so again, virtual, and we can go back to in person. Um, but this was our virtual field day from last year. And when school shut down, things were kind of rocky. And I think Open really worked super fast and super hard to get something out to phys ed teachers, to get to families, to get those kids back to being happy about movement and then it also again was advocating for phys ed and then helping with family involvement so i just jumped on board i sent out what i could as quickly as i could to my families about participating in national field day but i also made it so our families could do it when it was most convenient for them so i didn't lock them into a day i just said hey Pick a day between this set of dates, and when you can get it done, that's great. Send us photos, send, send us photos, send us feedback. And from what I got from families last year and even this year is that they had so much fun just with that bonding time and getting to know their, getting to know their kids better in that kind of competitive setting. Um, so these are a few pictures from our kiddos last year. 
some ordered t-shirts. Um, the day that a lot of our kids decided to do field day, it was, I don't know, maybe 50 degrees and cloudy. So it wasn't that warm, but they still had smiling faces and um, were getting after it. So the way that I set up our virtual field day for our families were I just went to the open website and I won't go through this whole thing because it's really long, but I went to the open website and I picked, um, well, I gave information about what national field day was. Um, I also put on this slide, you know, how to prepare, how to practice, and then what to do to perform. So to prepare, I sent in all the events that they could do, which I would change out again this year, but I sent in a list of events that were available, but had them choose what those families wanted to do based on what they had at home. Um, I also gave them options to practice if that was something that was convenient or able for their family to do, just give them time to practice, and then they were able to perform their events. Um, and again, they were able to send pictures to us and then share those photos on National Field Day. Um, I explained to the families that they can do whatever events they'd like to do. And again, it was they could do all 20 that we listed. They could just do two, whatever worked for them at that time. Um, I did give them ideas, you know, prior to field day, make sure you have all of your material materials ready. Basically, what I would do to get ready for field day that day when we're ready, we can just set it up and have that and have fun. Um, on here, I said, join our school on May 8th and point and post pictures. Again, if that does not work for you, just do what is most convenient for your family. A lot of them did choose May 8th, even though it was super cold. <laughs> um, I also created a slide for them to just of the materials that were needed. So some of my families looked at the materials that were needed and were like, okay, well, we don't have a kitchen spatula or something, but we do have these items. So what events can, can we do with the items that we do have? So if you decide to do a virtual field day, I highly recommend just going through and figure out what materials are needed for them to perform each event. Um, the families were able to keep score if they wanted to. Again, they did not have to. A lot of the families just did. Um, and last year, you were able to print your own scorecard out, which I thought was pretty neat. Some of them sent them to me, even parents. So I had one family where the adults were participating against the kids, and they would send me scorecards. And it was just really fun to see how competitive the parents would get with their kids. Um, on the next slide, I just told my parents that you would find the events that you could choose from. So again, I'm not going to go through all of these, um, but this, this is the presentation that I sent to my parents. Um, so there are a couple, and I was going to kind of click through, where I sent the events and the descriptions to the families. And again, they were able to go through and decide which ones were going to best fit their family at that time. Um, last year, some of the events came with videos, so not only were you able to read it, but you could actually see what was going on, and Open is really good at making visuals for people. Um, this year, they have a lot more than they did last year, so I would suggest just looking through that as well. Um, so there were quite a few events that our parents and families could pick through. And some are still doing them now. Some of my kids still ask if we could do these events in phys ed class. So that just, that makes me feel good that they remember something um, where I thought was kind of small, but it was, it meant a lot to them. I'm gonna try and skip through this portion, I apologize. Um, with this, I also would update the families every now and then. And how I sent this out to them was through a Bitly link. Last year during COVID, we were using two different platforms and that our parents were actively, actively involved in. So I would put the Bitly link onto the page and they were able to click on it and were notified for updates. This year, um, since we don't have as many virtual kids, I'm only using one platform and parents are still able to access that. If you have a newsletter that goes out and you're thinking about doing a virtual field day, I would suggest putting the link in there as well for um, parents to access that um, or even creating a slideshow, whatever works for you. 
Um, so this is the at day or at home field day this year. And I have a couple links just in case you haven't been to Open's website at all. You at first would need to register online. And I'm going to try and do this again and share this tab. So you would go to Open's website and this is where National Field Day is. And again, um, this can be sent out to you if you haven't gone to their website. So you would want to register first. And the reason you want to register is to one, they're gonna count how many schools are participating. Two, you'll get updated on events that are, maybe some event didn't have a video with it and it now does have a video, so you'll get added to that. You'll be notified when the ceremony starts and when it ends, you'll have access to seeing the torch run. So our kids were a part of the torch run this year. Um, they highlighted a few phys ed teachers, so I'll be representing Ohio with my third graders. Um, and I do apologize if you haven't been on here yet that you were able to purchase field day t-shirts. Again, this is how I got it last year and the kids in my pictures. Um, but I think registration for that is now over. Um, so then the next tab that you would want to look at is the planning part of it. And I'm not sure why it's backwards. So here it just gives you ideas on how to implement this to your parents or your families. Um, you can find the scorecards here as well. So if that's something that you thought was pretty interesting, you can add that into your field day. Um, their certificate. So I actually, because I love my kids so much, I printed their certificates and I hand delivered them to our kids last year. So the families that participated in field day, um, each person got a certificate. I went to work, printed out some certificates and I actually went out and hand delivered certificates to our kids that participated. Um, just to let them know that I, I was I was paying attention that they were they were participating in field day. So that helped them as well. Um, on here, there's just a lot of good information to help you run a virtual field day. And even you can use these events in, in a face-to-face -face field day. Um, the field day event center. So this has changed a little bit and it's good because there's different categories on open this year. Um, again, I mentioned they're really big on that SEL component this year. So there's an option for the Go Be Great company or organization where they're just having kids just be awesome. And um, to begin with this, doing things to be helpful and to think about um, ways to just to look upon, look outside of yourself. So if you click on certain tabs, again, it can be a lot and overwhelming, but if you look through it and say, hmm, I think my families have balloons in their household and they can definitely do this. I think that is something that is worth your while to spend and kind of put something together for your families. Um, Active Schools is on there. So they're an organization that promotes before and after school programs. Um, that is still trying to advocate for movement outside of the school building. So different activities are in there. Um, the Ninja Training, which is part of US Games, has a couple of events as well. So there's just a whole list of things that can be done. So if I were creating a, my first virtual field day, I think I would pick one event from each, maybe one or two events from each category and kind of put it together because you don't want to give your parents all this information that's overwhelming and they want to do it. They will not want to do it. So I would just pick a couple from each category or stick with one of these categories um, and just throw it out to your parents that way or your families that way. So again, that's all on the slide as well that Tom will share out. I'm going to stop sharing this. I may have to present again. One second. Um, and I think that is it. But that is all I have. Can we open it up for questions? I think I'm more interested in knowing if people are hybrid at this time or if they've already started planning for field day or what that might look like for their district or if they have any questions at all 
And if you hit the stop presenting, you should be able to see everybody. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And again, I'm not an expert. This is my first <laughs> in-person COVID field day that we just started planning, I think, yesterday, to be honest. 